In this video we'll be discussing chemical equilibrium and how we can solve for how far a particular reaction progresses. So let's take the example here if we have a general reaction of A plus B that is in equilibrium with the products of C plus D. So if we go through a quick recap we can have the stoichiometric coefficient which we typically write as nu uh, for A where consuming material as the reaction goes from the left to right. Uh, so we have a stoichiometric coefficient of minus one for B, also it's minus one. For C, it is positive one. And D, it is positive one. So if we were to have this reaction take place in a particular process, uh, and we didn't know how far it progressed, we would have to rely on the thermodynamics of the process to know how far uh, the A and B would move from the left to the right. But if you look at it initially, we have four different distinct species, A, B, C, and D. But if you recall, they are all linked together by a single common variable, and that is the extent of reaction. So what we have to work with, though, is we'll know some value, Ka, which is going to be an equilibrium constant. Now, from thermodynamics that we'll, we don't have to get into at, at this moment, um, we can write the equilibrium constant um, through a product sum, where we're summing from com starting component 1 all the way to the total number of components in the system as the partial pressure of species I raised to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient. So P of I is equal to the partial pressure, which is equal to the mole fraction, denoted by Y, times by the total system pressure. So if we make this substitution and we combine these two, we can find that the Ka can be related to the mole fraction, now this is only for an ideal gas case, by the product sum y of i raised to the new i power times by the total system pressure raised to the summation of new i. Now in the case for the reaction above, we can substitute values in here uh, where we have the summation of new i, in this case here, is equal to minus 1 plus minus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 0. So in this particular case, we're consuming two moles and we're forming two moles, so there's no pressure dependence on the equilibrium. But if we were to substitute in the mole fractions, we would have Ya raised to its stoichiometric coefficient of minus one, Yb raised to its, Yc to the power one, and Yd to the power one, and then this would equal to this following equation. Now the goal that we need to have now is we need yi as a function of the extent of reaction. If we can get all of the mole fractions in terms of one unknown variable, then we have here a system of one equation and one unknown, and we can actually figure out how far the reaction progresses from the left to the right, assuming that we have a value for Ka provided to us. So in order to accomplish this task, um, I like to construct a particular table. So I will have the column for the species, in which case we have A, B, C, D, and then the total. I will write Ni naught, and this is the, the initial number of moles of each particular species I. We have Ni, which can also be written um, as a function of the extent of reaction. Now this is just a formula that comes from the definition of the extent of reaction. And then we'll have a final column here, which is the mole fraction, which is going to be the total number of moles of I divided by, sorry, the moles of species I divided by the total number. So in this particular example, let's assume that we have only A and B being fed to this process. And let's say we have one mole of each. So we have one mole of A, one mole of B, zero moles of C, zero moles of D. So if we add all these up together, we're initially starting the process with two moles. Now if we write uh, the number of moles as a function of the extent of reaction here, we'll see that we have one initial mole minus the stoichiometric coefficient, uh, which is one, times the extent of reaction for this particular one. And the same thing for B. And with C, we have zero initial moles, but we have a positive one stoichiometric coefficient and same for D. 
So if we are to add up all of these, we'll see that we have two and all of the extensive reactions actually cancel out. So regardless how far this reaction moves to the left or to the right, um, we have exactly two moles. So in this last column, we can then relate all of these back to the mole fraction. So what we do is we take this value here for Ni and we divide it by the total number of moles. So the mole fraction of A as a function of the extent of reaction is just going to be equal to 1 minus the extent divided by 2, which is the total number of moles. Same goes for B. And then for C and D, it looks a little bit different. And if we've done everything correctly, this should add up to 1 so that the mole fractions are always conserved. So taking this information, we can then plug it back into our equilibrium expression. So Ka is equal to Yc, Yd over Ya, Yb. And so when we substitute in these expressions, we get the extent of reaction over 2 here, extent of reaction over 2. And then for A and B, it's 1 minus the extent of reaction over 2 times 1 minus the extent of reaction over 2. And so if we do the substitutions or cancel cancellations, I mean, we simplify the expression down to this form here. So what we can do then is we can take a nonlinear solver where we have one equation and one unknown. What a nonlinear solver will do is effectively it's a computer's way of smart guessing and checking to see at what extent of reaction does this equation here be satisfied. And so you can use Excel, you can use MATLAB, or some graphing calculators have the ability to solve nonlinear expressions as well. But this general formulation can be used for any uh, reacting system. The only difference that may occur is if we go back and look at our table here, we can change the number of moles entering the system, which would only change this column here, which then propagate over and change these likewise. If we were to change the chemical reaction, and go back to our initial example here, what we would be doing is changing the individual stoichiometric coefficients. But the same algorithm would apply to construct the table and get everything simplified down to a relationship of only the mole fractions, and we can still reduce this down to one equation and one unknown.